On July 9, 2006, an inner-city youth group servicing disadvantaged youths sponsored an outing at the Castlewood State Park near St. Louis, Missouri. It was a typical outing where there was picnicking, volleyball, and swimming at the sandy beach on the Merrimack River. Five inner-city youth drowned. A sixth youth was resuscitated and survived. This case study provides an actual scenario for students to study. Issues include sovereign immunity and accident reduction with barrier analysis. The incident is viewed from the perspective of the park. The Merrimack River is a designated swimming area in the park. From the picture, the river is more of a wading area than a swimming area. Because of budgetary issues within the state, no lifeguards were provided. The beach is unsupervised. If it weren't for the downstream hazard, it would be an ideal location to cool off on a hot summer July day and to have fun in the river. The river is three to four feet deep and moves a mild one to two miles an hour. Just downstream of the beach area, the river becomes shallow and the water speeds up to nearly four miles per hour. This is followed by a drop off where the water goes from two and one half feet to 10 feet in depth. The drop off is clearly visible in the aerial view of the river. Looking downstream, the drop off looks fairly benign. Compounding the hazard, the drop off is composed of loose silt and there is still a one to two mile an hour current making it impossible to climb back upstream. A good swimmer can easily swim on a diagonal to safety. Six inner city youth on an outing were wading in the beach area. The current slowly moved them downstream, or maybe they were simply exploring the river further downstream. One by one, they slipped over the drop off. None swimmers, they panicked. Five drowned and one was resuscitated. The incident is useful in discussing barrier analysis from the perspective of the park. Barrier analysis is the process of placing barriers between the source of an unwanted energy transfer and a potential target. The barriers are less than adequate, meaning that they are not 100% effective. In the Mord analysis, there are four types of barriers. These are barriers on the source of the energy transfer, barriers between the energy source and the target, barriers on the target, and barriers that separate by time or space. The worksheet is useful in identifying and prioritizing potential barriers. In this example, the source of the unwanted energy transfer is the drop-off. The unwanted energy transfer results in drowning. The target is swimmers and waders. Two examples of placing barriers on the energy source are provided. First, they could reduce the grade of the drop-off. This would forewarn waders of a changing depth. Second, they could fill in the drop-off, creating a more gradual drop-off. Most likely, both barriers would be impractical since the river may naturally attempt to reconstitute the drop-off. Placing no swimming buoys between the drop-off and swimming area is an example of placing barriers between the energy source and the target. The buoys help define the wading and swimming area. A limitation is that the waders and swimmers can ignore the buoys and go around them. Also care needs to be taken that they don't become hazards themselves. Barriers can be placed on the target. The beach could be managed as a life jacket zone. Although life jackets protect waders and swimmers on the drop off, would people wear them in the three to four foot deep swimming area? Making life jackets available is a management issue. Loaner jackets could be provided. Interpretive signs can aid in educating users regarding the dangers found on rivers. The sign can complement other barriers such as the buoys. Adding a swim at your own risk sign aids in legal defense. It attempts to transfer negligence to the user. However, it does little to communicate the actual dangers present. Most people simply ignore the signs. Last, barriers separate the energy source and target by time and space. 
Moving the beach area to a new location is an example of separation by space. Is there another suitable location? Closing the beach after 5 p.m. or during spring are examples of separation by time. Although these examples may be prudent, they have little impact on the drop-off. This case study addresses the issue of sovereign immunity. Because the state park is a governmental agency, in Missouri they have sovereign immunity and can't be sued for negligence. Discuss sovereign immunity and whether parks should have it when a private agency providing similar services doesn't. If the park didn't have sovereign immunity, would you have considered the park to be negligent? Should they have known that there was a hazard? Knowing their clientele, should they have taken additional preventive measures? The barriers can be ranked by their feasibility or cost of implementation. Installing buoys is both a physical barrier and an acceptable method of warning users. The interpretive sign is an inexpensive barrier and complements the buoys. Both barriers go a long way to reducing accidents without diminishing the outdoor experience in the park.